And for months, this startup of yours, Independence Point Advisors, has been known as Solomon Sisters, and that's in part because you started your career at Solomon Brothers, but it also spoke to the kind of firm you wanted to build. Tell us, why is now the right time for a women-owned investment bank on Wall Street? Thank you, Eric. It couldn't be a better time. And I always start with the most important thing in our industry, which is our clients, and how do we change client outcomes? And as I took the time over the past year to think about where I could still have impact on our industry, clients kept coming back to the diversity of opportunities and challenges that they were confronting. And frankly, the need to have a wider aperture of talent and helping them navigate that. And so I, I really have to thank clients for saying that now was the moment uh, to, try to, to try to take on this audacious goal of being both exceptional talent, but that also just happens to be diverse. Peter, when you and I spoke yesterday, you said, and I'm quoting you directly here, there are situations where it's already a huge disadvantage to show up with a team of all white men. That is obviously intriguing. It's also revealing. Is diversity no longer a matter of we'll get there at some point, but rather something your clients are expecting to see and perhaps even demanding? Yeah, I think we're at an inflection point, uh, and that's for two reasons. One is uh, that more diverse teams, more diverse banking teams, can produce better outcomes and better insight. And also, to your point, frankly, clients are starting in certain situations to demand a more diverse team, and we think that will grow over time. You describe the partnership with Anne as part of the modernization of Lazard. Tell us about that modernization effort, and specifically how you see Lazard and Independence Point working together. Sure, it's a very exciting time at Lazard. We've got this great brand, this great history, but we're also trying to become more modern, dynamic, and diverse, and that's a big part of what's going on here. And so across the board, from a hybrid work environment to a lot of investment in automation to make uh, the day-to-day -day less mundane, to uh, a real commitment to expanding our diversity, uh, Lazard today is on a new path and a dynamic path, and I think the affiliation and alliance with Independence Point Advisors is a great indicator of that, uh, of that trajectory. We're really excited to be working with Anne and her team. And you spent your career thus far at Citigroup, at JP Morgan, and of course at Bank of America, where you finished as chairman of Global Corporate and Investment Banking. What does modern mean to you? What does the modern investment bank look like? The modern investment bank, in my opinion, has to do with distributed talent. And distributed is a word that comes up in many modern contexts. But if you're going to really bring the diversity of talent that's required to confront these challenges, you first have to start with expertise. Clients are never going to be interested and advice purely because it comes from a diverse team. But where you get the intersection of incredible expertise and diversity and a diversity of life experiences, we actually think that that's going to um, open up the aperture and again, be exciting to the next generation of bankers who, who I very much have on my mind of how do we make this industry the place that they want to be to enjoy the experiences that people like Peter and I get to enjoy in working with some of the best clients around the world. And people are going to wonder, why give up one of Bank of America's top jobs? It took so long to get where you were, so much effort. Why give it up? And with it, of course, the power that comes with a role like that, the money, the security, to take the risk of starting your own firm. I think that COVID's taught us all a lot of things, but I thought a lot about impact. And I thought a lot about legacy. And I've spent the past 30 years trying to play an, an impactful role changing the inside of these big organizations and being the champion for diverse voices, not only women, but whether that's uh, people of color, whether that's openly out talent, whether it's our veterans. 
And yet what I found was that it got harder and harder for those voices to be heard. And I also saw the next generation of our daughters not thinking about the career that I pursued. And so if, if the launching of IPA does nothing else other than send a signal that Wall Street can indeed be a modern place that working mothers can work, succeed and thrive, and that we play our small role in changing this industry, that would be an incredible legacy and an incredible impact. Peter, and, how and much I hope of a problem? We also have a lot of happy clients. <laughs> yes, of course. Peter, I was just going to ask you how much of a problem is what Anne describes uh, still on Wall Street? Is it not attractive enough a place for women, not just to start out? Clearly, most of the analyst classes in Wall Street investment banks are split about 50 50 these days, but to, to stay and, and ultimately to build a career out. Well, clearly we need to do better, and, and uh, I think that's just stating the obvious and for, as it, for the industry as a whole. And again, this is one reason why we're so excited about the uh, affiliation with Independence Point, because it is symbolic and because it's a way of trying to say to those new analysts or associates that are looking forward to their careers, look, there's a different path here, and we can make it work. In some sense, we have to make it work. And uh, again, it's, it, it's an exciting moment because what we've done so far as an industry hasn't been sufficient, so it's time to try something new.